What is happening? What is happening? What's good, everybody? First and foremost, before I even get started with this live tonight, just want to send a big shout out to everybody, man, for rocking with me, man. Appreciate all the love, all the support the channel is getting. Hopefully some people get in here. I ain't done this in like, I've been live in a minute. So you already know what it is. When I go live, you guys got to drop your area code, what state you're representing, where you guys from. I want to see where everybody's from in the building. You know what I'm talking about? See what everybody doing. Just checking in, man, seeing how everybody is doing tonight. What up? What up? Spoken Reasons, what's happening? Fayetteville in the building. Tyler Goes Fishing in the building. Dallas, Texas. What's happening, man? I got to... Y'all, editing while you wait. Look, I got to get this lighting situation straight. I don't believe... Y'all can see me all right? This look all right? I need to adjust this lighting. Fayetteville, six. Sticks and VA, 616. Baltimore in the building. Yeah. What's happening, everybody? What's good? What's good? Yeah, you already know, Troller. Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm Gucci, man. I'm trying to get this thing situated so y'all can see. See, I'm trying to get the light situated so I can see and y'all can see me. Huh, huh. Maybe that's a little bit better. Maybe I need to turn this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody, what's good? What's good? What's good? Me still ain't good. Hold up, man. Excuse my ghetto lighting, y'all. See if we can get this thing. Like, I got the worst lighting situation going on right now. the worst lighting situation. Oh. This is horrible. This is horrible. Let's see if we can make this work. Y'all give me a second. I'm trying to get these lights right. Maybe that's better. Nope. I need to uh, just cut this TV off for real. Let me see if I can get a better situation. Yeah, come to VA, get them lines right. You already know. What's happening, everybody? Hope everybody's having a good evening. Just bear with me. We're going to get into this thing in a second. As soon as I get my lighting situation gravy. Maybe that'll work. It's probably the big screen I got in the back messing it all up. <clears throat> That's a little bit better. That's a little bit better. <clears throat> GA in the building. Georgia in the building. All right, so we got some people who are here. Let's politic and build. He said, forget it. Y'all got to be able to see me, though, bruh. You got to be able to see me so I can. Uh, all right. All right. Boom. The lights is fine. Everybody's Gucci with the situation. First and foremost, I want to send a big shout out to everybody that's in the chat right now. Everybody that's in the chat, go ahead and throw that like sign for everybody. We got like 40 people tuning in right now. Somebody tuning in from South Korea, North Carolina. The room is popping right now for a Friday night, man. Southern Cali in the building. Delaware. Yeah, that's what's up. That's the type of love I'm talking about. New Mexico, RVA, Colorado, Pennsylvania, the two, wow, California. Man, 
man, that is what is up, guys, for real. Yeah, so what I want to talk about tonight, I want to talk about whatever you guys want to talk about, but the first thing I want to get off my chest is Charlotte in the building. Yeah, I've been having a rough time out on the water myself, for real, guys. Like, I ain't ca caught no fish in a couple weeks. Went out with trolling RVA, trolling on the river, and uh, way of fishing last week. Had a fish on. Lost him. Like, it was crazy. He was right there at the boat. I don't know what happened, but, um, you know, it is what it is. We were fishing crazy conditions. It was, uh, no, nah, he didn't break my rod. He just broke loose. I was using a uh, a um, uh, a blade bait. Marion Pickett. I'm going to get you that uh, bait caster tutorial, man. I'm going to get you that. Um, definitely. Pre-spawn, yeah. Uh, hopefully, I can go fishing tomorrow. But look, so uh, a thing that I've been wanting to talk about is something that I get asked quite a bit. And that is, what is my camera set up? What am I running for my cameras? So boom, you know, you guys got to have the crispy scenery display and all that. So I went and got a uh, Canon. It is a Canon. Um, I got it right here. This is my like vlogging camera right here. And it's a Canon SL3. And you know, it's it run you about 800 bucks. Um, you can also get some dope lenses to go on, on it. Right now I'm running a uh, 24 millimeter lens, I believe. Yeah, I'm running a 24 millimeter lens. And uh, if you guys been paying attention to my channel, you know when I'm using this camera, you know what I'm saying? Like, it it is like, it's super dope. I'm so mad at this, um, these lights. I really want to get this thing right. I might have to just like hold them up. Bam, that's, yeah, that looks a whole lot better right there. So this camera right here, Canon SL3, I pay like seven hundred something dollars for this camera, but it's like one of the best investments that I have made for uh, Mike Seal. What's happening for uh, my recording, man? It's just like it makes a total difference. So, with that being said, I also had to up my. Uh, I know that's what I'm saying, stuff. Yeah, I'm, I might need to do that. That's what it is. Stuff had a good idea. Do this. Now we're off. Bam. There we go. Now we can see. Now we are good. Stephanie, you're the man. I knew that was the key, but we'll see. Now we good. All right. So we're going to do that like that. Big shout out to the homie trolling RVA. Trolling on the RVA. He's he's the first guy. He just threw me two bucks, man. Two dollars, man. That's a crate bait right there. That's a that's a little jig. All that. South Padre Island. So look, I'm getting off track. Y'all, it's a it's a 92. It's actually 102 inches. The monitor is 102 inches. So when I edit and stuff, I can see everything everything best rod for the shimano slx dc i don't know it depends on what you're casting what are you what are you gonna be throwing on it you know what i mean are you gonna be having a crankbait you're gonna throw uh it depends on what you're fishing with you know what i'm saying <laughs> 302 that's funny Crankbaits. Um, for my crankbait reels, I have a five, three to one gear ratio. It just allows that crankbait to move slower through the water column. Because if you have a crankbait on, you don't want to have a fast rod 
a, a fast reel because let's say you you know you grinding along the bottom and you bump into something with that faster reel you're gonna bump into it and it's gonna set inside there you know what i'm saying so you want to have a slower reel so when you do bump a rock you bump some uh some stuff on the bottom you can the the reel's not that fast so it's not gonna pull that crank into the rock and get you stuck it's gonna allow that crank to hit and deflect off whatever you're hitting on the bottom so you can keep that crank moving your reel's too fast you're gonna end up winding that thing down into some uh into some uh into the structure whatever you're hitting south florida just checked in south florida in the building um but i i use a, a mojo bass a st croix mojo bass for my crank rods it is a uh and it is a um it's a glass rod fiberglass rod it's got way more give on it i love it you know that's what i've been using on my uh, lipless cranks as well so it's been a, a dope little setup for me. I, I really love that setup. St. Croix Mojo Bass Fiberglass 7 foot 2 Rod. So 5, 3 to 1, yes. I use a, a lower gear ratio on, on my crankbaits just for that reason. Because you, when you get that crankbait down, you don't want it moving too fast. You want to get it down and let it stay in that zone so the fish have more time to strike it. Um, but what I got started on, I got a little bit off track. What I got started on is I was having a lot of audio problems, like with the, with the GoPro, you have to buy this right here, which is a, which is like a little adapter to even be able to use a microphone with it on a hero five, six, seven, and eight, they, I don't know why they did this. They just couldn't make a plug so I could plug my mic directly into the GoPro. They had to make this little stupid contraption right here. I'm going to show you guys this. And then I'm going to show you what I got to, to solve it. Favorite top water lure right now, Whopper Plopper. Whopper Plopper, I like a frog, a Whopper Plopper, and that's it. I mean, for real... I ain't gonna front though. The, the Whopper Plopper is my joint. Like Whopper Plopper, open water, uh, weedless frog, a, a top a frog for the uh, for the grass and stuff like that. It's gonna be the Teckle Sprinkler Frog. Um, those are my two like go go to. <clears throat> Super eight eliminates the stupid yet, yeah. but uh. This is what you have to buy to actually put a microphone on the Hero 5 and up so far. Um, somebody just said that the mod is coming out soon. I cannot wait for that day so I don't have to use this thing anymore. So what happens is, as you can see, this is a used one. This is a used one right here. And you can see just the formation of it like that. It doesn't stick inside. <clears throat> when you plug it into that port, see how it's rocking back and forth like that? It'll cause that thing to either come out or you just won't have any audio at all after you've been fishing the whole day. So I was having to go back and, and check and do all of the uh, things every time that I started recording so that I, I made sure that I had audio. It's been plenty of days that I've been out there fishing and I get back to the uh, car and try to look at the stuff and it's just no audio there at all. Exactly. So what I've done is I went and got a, uh, a new skeleton case for my GoPro. I got this one from forever.com a new skeleton case. It's pretty dope. And this piece right here actually slides inside the GoPro, slides inside the bottom, and you got your regular regular plug. But the dope thing, or well, what I thought that was dope about it is that, I know I just had it, is that it comes with this, uh, 
this little piece right here. So it's got a little screw head, and then you know it's like a little U bolt right here. So you take that, and this case has a, a hole in the side of it where you could take that and you can screw it down so 16 dang dang that sounds like fun so what ends up happening is right there that's the back side of it so this little hook right here in the front it holds that cord so it can't move at all. I appreciate that, Mike. So that's what you end up with. And this thing will not, it shouldn't move at all. So that is my solution for that. And um, <clears throat> I also got, I bought another mic too. So that'll sit on top because I'm gonna have a different camera angles and all that good stuff. So <clears throat> hopefully this will be a solution. I won't have any more problems with my audio. Hopefully not. Jerry rig it for now. No, hopefully that's, that's it. Bam, right there. That's the solution to my problem. I'm hoping anyway, we are gonna see tomorrow if this thing uh, if this thing works, you know, last it, yeah. I think I got one of those. See, I got another one of these things too. I got a few of them, I got like three or four of them. So, it is what it is. <clears throat> What's wrong with the mic that's already on the GoPro? Have you heard a, a microphone on a GoPro Hero 5 by itself? It sounds horrible, dog. Once you put a microphone on a GoPro, record something, and then use the microphone without a GoPro on there. And you'll see what I'm talking about. It just makes the whole experience with a, without a microphone, you don't want to do it, bro. I'm trying to tell you. You listen to it with a mic and then go to without a mic, man, you don't want to do it. What's happened, Fishing 573? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You guys know, man, what, what it is. If you guys own the GoPros, you, you already know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you got to have a mic. Mic is the way to go for all you guys that are wondering about that. You definitely want to put a microphone on your GoPro Hero 5, for anything you're using outside, you want to have a microphone on that thing to get the best quality that you can. What GoPro mic do I use? Um, I use the uh, Rode Video Micro. That's like 50 bucks, but um, I'll show you that too. So this is the Rode Video Micro, and for real, it's a small investment that'll take you a long way. But this is the dead cat that goes on top of it. So this is the actual microphone itself. It's not an omni, it's not an omni directional microphone. It's just a directional microphone. So it's going to pick up the best wherever you, you're pointing it at. It's not going to pick up all around. Yeah, people catch a fish on the James all the time, man. I haven't caught any out there because I ain't going out there right now. I got to get my motor straight. And <clears throat> when I use creature bait, what size hook do I use? Um, It depends on the size of the creature bait. I usually use like a in between a three and a five odd hook depending on how big the creature bait is because you don't want to have it all the way to the bottom what's wrong with the motor um well 
my motor is like it's doing something really weird i believe it's like a carburetor problem um i can have it wide open and it'll fire and but then it'll just bog down for a little while so <clears throat> it'll bog down for a minute and then it'll come right back to running wide open but yeah it's the ethanol in there as well i believe it's a carburetor problem i had it worked on before and it just didn't turn out the way that I wanted it to after I had it worked on. So I'm trying to I'm trying to get it right. Use Octane Boost. I got 93 in there, but like it's nowhere around here in my area. It's nowhere around here that has non-ethanol fuel. I'll have to drive an hour to go get fuel and then to my fishing destination. So it's just like. I'm like a rock in a hard spot. What do you guys think? You think I should just go ahead and spend that twelve hundred and get like a new, fresh nine nine four stroke fuel injected? That way, I ain't got to worry about that problem. You know what I'm saying? It'll just be a brand new motor, so I ain't got to worry about nothing. I know when I get out there and start it up, it's gonna start, and I can hold it wide open. Yes, get it. Now y'all need to help me pay for it now. <laughs> Yeah, all right. <clears throat> nah, I ain't nah, I ain't getting it like that. Trust me. I'm about to just go ahead and, and get back in the kayak. Don't even worry about the John boat. How many hours on the motor? I have no idea, but it is clean. And it's clean. The motor, I mean, dude opened the cowl on it and I was like, <gasps> Wow. I ain't never seen a, a engine, a motor that clean. So it's not, it's not bad at all. First bait caster, Daiwa Fuego. Seven three to one, seven foot, medium, heavy, fast tip. Seven three to one. That means you're going to be pulling in a lot of line. A seven three to one is a really fast reel. <laughs> Um, and they're a, a different, you can throw anything you want on there for real. Your gear ratio is determined at a, a certain speed. Burn 87 in the, in the outboard, man, it's so many different. Would I use top water this time of year? No. What up, Black Veil Dance? Um, but like I was saying, use 87 wolf octane booster. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Right. So look, I thought you gonna get our first vote. Nice. That's a good goal. Top water is tearing musky up. Yeah, top water. Appreciate the love, can't do. Best time for bank, best, best, what? What is the best this time for bank? Are you talking about the time of year? What is the best this this time for bank fishing this time? I don't, I don't understand that. So yeah, send me some octane booster. I need like some, some 103 octane with no ethanol in it. But um, lipless crankbaits, I've been tearing them up on lipless crankbaits. That's what I've been throwing here lately. The last two times I've been out. Lipless crankbaits and um, and blade baits. Bass fishing this time of year. But seven, that seven, three to one gear ratio is pretty quick, but you really determine how fast that lure is moving by the crank of your rod. Or you're real, excuse me. What state am I bank fishing? Um, I'm in Virginia, man. If you're asking me, I don't know if you're asking the other guy. And Lucas Stabilizer. Eh. What size line do I use for my blade baits? I have 12 pound fluorocarbon, pure fluorocarbon on my uh, blade baits. 
I'm in the 804. I don't even know that. I guess that's Western Virginia. I don't know. I don't even know what that's classified as. Look up 804 area code. That'll tell you. I don't know. To be honest with you, you know what I'm saying? Thank you, Black Bill Dance. We are in Central VA. Somebody who knows, because I don't I don't know. 804, that's it. The snakes on the bank made me register your boat. <laughs> Dumfries in the building. Seven seven oh three. Appreciate you stopping through, Tyler. Haven't been to the New River. Baby Bull Shad, yes. I have quite a few of the baby bull shads, three or four of them. And they're they're crazy. East Coast bass fishing. What's up, bro? I'll be seeing you slaying them jacks too, man. I'm ready to come down there. 22 bird shot keeps them, them snakes friendly. <laughs> yeah, I went to, I got a video with the baby bull shad and the chain pickerel were tearing it up. Tearing it up. I caught one bass and like eight chain pickerel. So it definitely works without question. Hey, y'all don't forget to um stop by there, gonefishing804.com too. Grab you some swag. Is mono okay for the baby bull shad? Yeah, of course. Why not? As long as it's got low memory in it, you don't want to throw something out there and it don't, it don't cast nowhere. Thanks, Victor. Appreciate the love, man. So tomorrow's goal. If you are you around my area, you know it's been raining horribly. Like it's bad. Like it's like flooding everywhere. I'm gonna go try to fish this stuff tomorrow. What do y'all think I should be throwing? I'm going to fish a reservoir. It's got lots of points. It's got lots of coves. Uh, I assume it's pretty deep. It'll be my first time there. So I know nothing about it. Yeah, it's flooding everywhere. Blade baits. Okay, I got a couple of those. Got quite a few of those. What else besides the blade bait? What else should I tie on? I don't even know what the resi is. You crazy. Weather bad tomorrow too. No, it's not. Throw some tubes. Well, it ain't going to be bad tomorrow. It's going to be like 50 degrees, 51 degrees. Partly cloudy. The jig, okay. What color jig should I throw though? Stained muddy water, chatterbait, spinnerbait, shaky head. What up, Curtis? It's all right, Jack Her. You get out there, it's going to come. Black and blue, Ned Rig, Pumpkin. Finesse jig with a swim bait trailer. Okay. Chartreuse white. Okay. Javante, what's happening? Do I hunt it all? No, because I don't like to, to gut the animals and, and skin them and all that stuff. So I don't take parts in the hunting part. Fishing ain't that hard, you know what I'm saying? I could, I could deal with that. Deer and turkeys and all that stuff. Nah, I'm good. How's the fish doing? Find some clean water and throw that mega bass. Mega bass what? You talking about them uh, responses? Some diner responses? I hooked the fish. That was the last fish that I hooked up on was uh, a diner response by me. A mega bass fish ain't got that jerky like a deer yeah peter you right that's why you kill them and send me the jerky there we go catch pick release all right i can sign real what jerk bait the chip jar is up. 
It's up there. I don't know. You gotta um you gotta figure that out. It's been like 30 minutes, y'all. I'm hungry. I'm ready to eat some pizza. Then I'm gonna take a shot or something. North Carolina, a drop shot. That's too, I don't know. Drop shot, I don't, I don't know, y'all. I ain't really with the drop shot. As you can tell, I really don't have that many videos with a drop shot tied on at all just because I don't even throw them. Like, I need a tutorial on a drop shot for real. Overhand cast for big casters. At the Alabama rig. Overhand cast for bait casters. Don't try to throw your arm out. That's why you're backlashing every time. You're not trying to. I understand you want to get it as far as you possibly can, but you got to make sure all your scenarios, right? Everything's set up properly. Because when I'm going to give away fish rops, I don't know. But you, you don't want to be out there giving it your all, trying to overhand cast that. It goes straight in the water. You have you got to turn your, your tension knob down because if you're trying to whip it out there ex extremely hard every time, what's happening is that spool is moving faster than your bait is, and that's why it backlashes and blows up on you. You got to... Yeah, I fished Dyson Reservoir a few weeks ago. Um, take your time when you're throwing that bait caster. You want to start look slow and then work your way up. I didn't just get out there, bro, with a bait caster and like, boom, and it was magic. No, it was not. That's not how it happened. It took me like three or four months to get used to actually throwing a big caster and using it properly, I still be backlashing to this day. So it's not like you can just get out there and automatically know how to throw the bait caster. The first thing you do with a bait caster is you th put the line on there and <clears throat> you hit that button. You hit the button, that lure drops on the ground and it just blows up on you. Cause you got to, you keep it tight. Keep your tension knob tight when you first start off. Hang on one second. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show you something. Hey. All right. Hang on one second. I got some line wrapper on this thing. Okay. So, it's my first little bait caster right here. What you want to do is your tension knob is here. So, you tighten your tension knob up and then just cast like regular. Don't try to give it your all. Just cast like, you, you know, real easy until you get the hang of that. And then you can loosen your tension knob up some. And then you can cast a little bit further. So don't try to, to go extra hard. You don't, when you hit your button, when you're first starting out, when you hit your button to release the spool, they say to have it dropping slowly, you kind of want it barely, not moving at all, because you're just getting used to that bait caster. So you want to start off really, really slow and just try to make some cats. And once you start making cast, you can loosen that tension knob up and kind of let that bait drop down a little bit more. And then you can cast further. But you don't want to get out there and try to give it your all and try to cast to the other side of the lake. Because that's when you you won't you're you're gonna backlash. Cause you're trying to throw it too hard and you, you can't reach the other side of the lake with what you got. So you want to take it to um you want to take it really slow. I, yes, I have braid on here too, but that don't help. I still backlash with braid. What a lot of people do is they they take it, you know, halfway down, 
<clears throat> people say practice casting. People have um, they take they strip a lot of their line off and then they put a piece of uh, electrical tape or wrap some electrical tape around maybe 75 yards, 50 yards down the spool. And then they get, they cast with that and they get used to it. And then they take, take the uh, piece of tape off, but that will help you stop your reel from blowing up. Me personally, I didn't do that. I don't like doing that. I wanted to learn how to use it without that. <clears throat> Yeah, you don't want to, like I said, when you go, you have a whole lot of more momentum when you're casting over your head. Side casting ain't that bad, but if you're casting over your head, you have to just take it easy. Don't don't try to, yeah, don't, don't give it your all. You got to go slow. Every reel is different too. Like on one of my reels, I can just barely move it and that thing will go a mile. On my, another reel, I have to throw it a little bit harder to get it to get it to go the distance that I want. So all my stuff is set up for baits that I'm gonna throw, like rods, powers, actions of the rods. All of that stuff is set up to kind of do what I want. Nah, big G Dub, you gotta slow down, bro. I'm trying to tell you. Once you once you start getting used to it, that's when you can you can move up. Heavier line. Somebody said heavier line helps with the, with the backlash. Yeah, I just started using bait casters like two years ago. So for right now in my area, they have been hitting the uh, lipless crankbait, the jerk bait, and the jig for the or the three things that I would take with me if I had no other choices. I go slow, but I cast with my right hand and the bait goes to the left. You got a point, You wherever your rod tip ends up at, wherever you end up pointing your rod tip, that's where your bait's gonna go. So if you're trying to cast at an object, your rod tip needs to end, end at that object. If it's not, if it's off to the left, it's going to go to the left. If it's off to the right, it's going to go to the right. If you're trying to side cast it, you have to stop before the object because the your rod tip is all, it's crazy. I got to show you guys one day about that. But if you're side casting it, you want to stop before the object. He said, you got crooked arms. <laughs> Live minnows, yeah. I use live stuff every every now and then, but I really don't try to. That's not my thing for real. I like imparting the action on the lure to fool the fish. That that just that's just how I fish. I like imparting the action on it. Well, I'm left handed too. I right hand retrieve. Yeah, so I love hand retrieve. Live is is live has its places. I'm not I like a ADHD kind of bad, so I can't really just I just can't sit there and you know just wait for something. I I always have to be like kind of moving around and doing something. It's wild. I don't know why that happens, but. Silver Buddy, yes, I have. My transducer is in the back of my boat. Yeah, there you go, Danny. Yeah, I've, I'm familiar with one ride, one reel. I know who he is. But yeah, guys, it's about that time. Been like 40 minutes. I'm hungry. I'm getting ready to go eat something. I'll be going fishing tomorrow, hopefully, if all the weather the conditions are right. I hope you guys have a beautiful evening. I appreciate every single one of you for tuning in and rocking with me, man. It's been a pleasure. Um, can't wait to do some. Look at this guy. 
way of fishing tunes in at like 40 minutes in. <laughs> but um, you already know I'm about to sign off. I'm about to go eat, man. Like I said, I hope you guys have a good evening. Get out there. Keep your lines wet because it's all about the hook set. What's up, Emma? How you doing? Um, I mean, you guys already know what it is. Like I said, I appreciate all you guys. The channel is doing amazing, man. Like, I can't even express in words how how blessed I've been with this channel, man. It, you And I couldn't even do this without you guys. I appreciate y'all so much. Hopefully, I will catch some fish tomorrow. Guys, don't forget to stop by gunfishing804.com. Grab you some swag. You know what I'm saying? Get you some drip. It's going down in 2020. We're going to be doing a whole lot of stuff. Like, man, we're going out of town trips. We're going to we're going to do some crazy stuff. So please tell a friend, tell a friend, come rock with me over here at Gone Fishing 804. And you know, hey, after this goes off, you guys want to see some more lives. Let me know because I haven't done a live in like forever. Leave some topics down there. Man, you already know what it is, man. All right. Yo, keep them lines wet because it's all about the hook set. Let's get it.